All right. Um, let me show you this. You know, this happened because of my good buddy, Jeff. Jeff, Jeff. Jeff Wittick, of course. And we meant to show you this a while back, a couple weeks ago, a couple shows ago. Uh, we didn't have the time, but I thought this was so important. Remember when Jeff Wittick was calling out Andrew Schultz? Remember that? Because Andrew Schultz brought up Jeff Wittick on his show, and he's like, Why does this guy keep complaining about his eye? Man, this guy's milk in his eye. This one the thing. And then Jeff's like, I will make sure you feel the pain that I have felt every day, brother. You have disrespected me. Remember that? And they got in this back and forth. We showed you some clips. You guys remember the uh, Andrew Schultz, Jeff Wittick fight? Well, this is great because Jeff is going to show us here. He's going to expose his text combo between him and Schultz. And it's pretty juicy. I haven't seen anybody in the comedy community talking about this, and I would think that this is something the fans of Andrew Schultz, the fans of comedy, and of course those three channels I keep mentioning would really like to hear. So let's show you this. Andrew Schultz, come on down to the hot seat here on Red Bar. There we go. Uh, oh, sh uh, let's do, wait, you, oh yeah, here it is. Okay, and then we've got some more Andrew Schultz coming up too. He's got a new grift. New grift. You regret beefing with a list. Okay, so here he is, Jeff FM, and he's with Tana, who kind of, you know, if Tana wasn't here today, we'd get a little more out of Jeff. She doesn't care about any of these things that happen with Jeff or Andrew Schultz. We're going to go to 5740, the texts. This is going to all speak for itself, right? Pretty much. So he's going to read these texts. He's going to tell us about the fight. Is this the very beginning of his story here? No, because they kind of ramble for a long yeah. time. So he's talking about how he texted Schultz after this incident they had with the eye. Okay, great. Let's hear it. Yeah, I, I was on Do Not Disturb pretty much this whole summer. Oh. I just didn't want to be bothered. I was going through a lot. I so that's really, a part of your brat really, summer. Yeah, I had a real brat gotcha. summer, I guess. But now we need kind of a new thing for the fall. Yeah, so here's some text. Look at this. So look what Jeff has been texting to Andrew here with no response. Yo, it's your worst nightmare. Can't act like you don't see this one. Your own friends don't even like you, LOL. It was easy to get your number, and it wasn't <laughs> Big Mike, if that's what you're thinking. Someone closer to you. I'm going to embarrass you. Or just sabotage you and take myself down with you to show how stupid I really am. You got a lot of ops. And you just got a lot more from that dumbass Patreon video. And don't take this as texting like an ex-girlfriend. This is just texting from somebody that wants to send a message. <laughs> Jeff Wittick, look at this. Oh, wow. Yo, it's your worst nightmare. Thanks, Dana. <laughs> Jeff Wittick. <laughs> this is so embarrassing. It was easy to get your number. <laughs> to get from Mike. I got it from Mike. And it wasn't Oh, he Mike, did get it. He you're... did get it from Big Mike? <laughs> Facts. You're thinking, you, you, were, you got him there. I know. I know. I didn't give a fuck. I was furious. Mm hmm Yeah, someone closer to you. I wanted to fuck with them more. See, sometimes I like being a girl because girls will just, like, tell other girls. So, Tana, when Tana does her Adderall, which she's on right now, I could always tell when someone's done Adderall. The reason I don't do Adderall ever on the show is because it puts you in what's called sincere mode. It puts you in business mode. And petty little things you don't really find funny, you know, and you just want to kind of be efficient and responsible. So Tana goes on these shows. She takes an Adderall. It blows her whole character. I wish I could reach out to Tana. Maybe, Jeff, you could tell Tana... Don't use Adderall on your shows. Drink on your shows. Drink to remember, Adderall to forget. <laughs> Thank you. But then more. See, sometimes I like being See, a girl so. because girls will just like tell other no. girls that like you're like such a fucking. You wrote bitch a and, like, poem where... to Alyssa. <laughs> what the fuck are you? Those talking? weren't the text though. Wait till you see. Andrew's gonna start responding, and these are the texts that the comedy scene needs to see. And Trump. About. This is. 
this is bad. At least this is personal to him. Like this was direct. You, you just literally put me on a George Foreman grill and fucking Look, cooked me. I said I'm putting out your kill shot this Jeff, week. Jeff, good evening. I had no plans. <laughs> no, I was just, I was just fucking with him. Uh, yeah. Then, look. Then he finally. Starts going, Jeff, good evening, period. Look at this. So after Jeff did that wall of text. They're saying, Mike, you were just talking about doing Adderall an hour ago. It's like, yeah, not on yeah, the show. Yeah, not on the show. In my private life. In my private hot tub. In my private underwear. You want to guess the color of my Adderall? It's not happening. No, I, you, you never do Adderall on a show. There's my point. You do Adderall to score, okay? <laughs> to score big all night, all day. Look at Andrew's response to all this. So he says, and, uh, Jeff says this, I'm putting out your kill shot this week. <laughs> and then uh, Andrew finally responds and he goes, Jeff, good evening. Ugh, isn't that gross, first of all? Andrew Schultz saying, Jeff, good evening. Let's see if they'll narrate. If not, I'll read some of these. Look, then he finally starts going, Jeff, good evening, period. And the fu fucking proper pronunciation. Hello, Andrew. Yeah, it's punctuation. But now tell me point. why you did what you did. <laughs> I think you guys could work it out on the remake. See, time. this is, yeah, see, John Adder, I think you guys could work it out. No one wants to work it out, ever. So look how Jeff responds. Hello, Andrew. Now tell me why you did what you did. <laughs> okay, th hopefully they read all these. I want to see you read, Jeff. Can you read what he said? Down. Can you read what he said? Oh, I'm reading. Read like, it out loud oh. for the audience. When we first met at the fight in Manchester, you said you wanted to move back to New York. I said if you came, I would help you in any way I could. Look at this, and this is always what a little asshole says, so... This has nothing to do with why Jeff's pissed. Jeff's pissed because Andrew Schultz was talking about how Jeff is milking his eye injury and won't stop talking about the eye. This would be like if somebody said Mike is milking his sickness. You know, we'd, we'd all be very mad. So look what Andrew Schultz says in response to all this. He goes, when we first met at the fight in Manchester, you said you wanted to move back to New York. I said if I came, I would help you in any way I could. I met, okay. Yeah, regardless. That's what a little uh, clout chasing schmoozer starts doing first, okay? I meant that. I have hope. I have hope that Stop it. Built. Go on. Okay. Yeah. And, and then, then look at Jeff. Jeff, so he says that, and Jeff goes, go on. Um, And then Jeff says, and then you stood me up for our barbershop episode. That's Jeff does this show called Barbershop where he cuts people's hair. But I was nice enough to do your Yes Man Marks podcast, okay? But what you did excuses none of this. Okay, let's see. And this is the rest of what I said. And then you stood me up okay, for a barbershop I don't know episode, what they're going to read and what they're going to But I was nice enough to do your Yes Man Marks pod. That's because the guy was like laughing along with him when he was telling the joke. So I called him Yes Man. He was a very nice kid and I liked the podcast that we did. Uh... But what you did excuses none of this. Okay, I now gave you tickets Andrew. to my show in Manchester and invited you back. So saying, Andrew hey, this says, is important to you. Yeah. I gave you tickets to my show in Manchester, invited you backstage. I was nice to you because I thought you really wanted to do creative stuff and not low-hanging fruit drama for clicks bullshit. Wi-Fi is shit here. Not sure if it's going through. I'm getting to the point. This is Schultz. So Schultz was cool with Jeff. Look at this. So it had nothing. To, so Schultz started talking about Jeff's eye on the podcast because he saw Jeff hanging out with guys like me. He saw Jeff started promoting Too Lazy to Try, Red Bar, Podcast Cringe. He started going after comics. So Andrew Schultz doesn't say any of this publicly. He just starts bashing Jeff on his show. Doesn't tell you about any of this, but just starts bashing Jeff on his show saying, oh God, this guy's milking his eye. So you were doing that like in a hissy fit response, a tantrum response, because you saw Jeff hanging around 
red bar and too lazy to try and getting into anti comedian videos had that episode with Chris DiStefano where he brought up that yeah. he watches podcast cringe like one time. So, so Andrew's real. Look at this. To the side. So Andrew starts talking shit about Jeff. He doesn't tell his audience, well, Jeff's, you know, uh, into hating comedy now. So I'm going to hate him. He just starts trying to make people hate Jeff on his show. So that's kind of like a, you know, we don't get to really see this side of Andrew. We don't get to know the, these little inner workings so look at that so that's how andrew's mind works andrew gets hurt he sees jeff wittick hanging out with anti-comedy podcasters and then just decides to start dissing jeff unrelated to kind of bring down jeff to the people but it's really because of this low hanging fruit drama oh is it so my Sam Talent clips are low hanging fruit. You say, oh, I see, I see, I see, I see. So now we know, look at this. Now we know that these channels bother Andrew Schultz. Tell everybody. Too lazy to try. Here you go. Comedy enforcement. Look at this. Andrew Schultz is actually bitter about us haters. Now, why would a very rich and successful man who just interviewed Trump He's got all the money in the world. He's selling out Madison Square Garden. He's got a million fans, millions of followers, compliments 60 times a second, all day, every day. Yet these little clip channels and Red Bar bothers him? Whoa. Whoa. All right, let's hear some more. There's more of this, right? I think so, yeah. Yeah. Hey, Joe, I was nice to you because I thought... You really wanted to do creative stuff, but not low hanging fruit drama for clicks bullshit. Okay, I, I like that the you point. said what you said hurt. It's my life. I think that that is yeah, the point. It ain't low hanging fruit drama. It's my life. What you said hurt. Hold on. I said, now I'm going to make you feel what I felt. I'm yes, such a okay. Little... This is a. See, Jeff is a funny guy. Listen to Jeff read this. Here, this is what Jeff says here. Now I'm going to make you feel what I felt. <laughs> and listen to how Jeff shows it to you. Hold on. I said, now I'm going to make you feel what I felt. I'm such a little what a guy. drama queen. You are but I'll back it up, though. I will Why fucking not? make him feel what I felt. Physically or emotionally. Whoa! That is a internet. That's an internet threat, not a real threat. That's a... Uh... <laughs> Go on. Read. Read. Oh, so, I'm reading. Read, but read it. You do Andrew's voice. After I was kind to you, I said I wanted to help you. Went so here, on, look at this. Here, I'll read these. So uh, Schultz says, hold on. I'm getting there. After I was kind to you and said I wanted to help, you went on my friend Chris's podcast, Chris Stefano, who we're against here too. What happened to Chrissy D's family coming up on Red Bar? Another guy you should not be listening to. Take it from me. After I was kind to you and said I wanted to help, you went on my friend Chrissy D's podcast and said a bullshit lie from a comedy hate channel that I told my fans the only way they could ever see the special was if they bought it and then I released it on YouTube two weeks later. For what it's worth, I told them I would release it on YouTube in the future. I also told them if they couldn't afford the special to pirate it. Okay, blah, blah, blah. Remember all his lies about the special? Yeah, I got right. a special coming out and the streamer won't do it, so we're selling it. And then he sold his special for how much money? 35 bucks on Moment House or something like that, right? Yes. And then two weeks later, he releases it for free. He didn't tell nobody. And by the way, why does that even bother you? Didn't you make like 10 million bucks off that bullshit? Don't you make 10 million bucks every weekend now? Why would you care about any of this? That's such a light thing to be bullied exactly. for on a comedy hate channel, by the way. So, <laughs> You've got it so but, easy. So, but the, and then again, you went and tried to sully Jeff's name because... But you didn't say it's because of this. Why didn't you just bring this up and say, Jeff Wiedek was saying that I scammed my fan. Like, you didn't bring that up because you know all your fans agree. And think that that's what you did. 
Instead, you just tried to taint Jeff's reputation, which is a real sick thing to do. If I hate someone, I tell you exactly why. I tell you, I look, I search, I and make up her reasons, for God's sakes. But not Andrew Schultz. Andrew Schultz does a sneaky little manipulative move where he tries to tarnish somebody because they hurt him. Or because they're exposing the truth. You know, why not? I still not just... can't believe that comedy hate channel is a genre. Why would you do that? <laughs> oh this is what Andrew God. Schultz, why would you do that? And then Jeff says, it was a little joke that warrants you to make fun of my lifelong injuries. You that sensitive comedian boy. And you know, Jeff's just kidding. Like he's threatening. He's doing like what we do. He's not actually really hurt. This podcast instead of bullshit live from a comedy hate channel that I told my fans the only way that they could ever see the special was if they bought it and then they released it on YouTube two weeks later for what it's worth. I the said beauties. a joke because there was a uh, comedy like mm, so then he's kind of saying that like you said a joke and yada yada. Yeah. So you know those channels that Tana make don't fun care. Of the, you go faster, Kyle. So you know how the- Tana. Get off the Adderall. Drink only. You know, I want to say this to everybody out there. You guys got to be more yourself. You know, Tana's fans are like, she shouldn't drink. So Tana doesn't drink. But drunk Tana is good Tana. I got a feeling like Tim Heidecker goes through something like this too. Worried about what the fans think. You know, tucks it all in. Pent up. Worried. Be yourselves. Do what's funny is you're not here. You guys, you guys, all you create is you're not here to showcase that you're the best guy, the most respectable, great human. Nobody wants to tune into a show to see a put together, respectful human being. That's not what this is. We're here to be entertained. Entertain them no matter what. Too many shows are so buttoned up, worried about what everyone's thinking about them. Who cares? Give them a good time. That's all that matters. Okay, let's go back to this. Their Andrew Schultz. Their are nightmarish, though. Well, they yeah. Well, you gotta kick it's them up. Hard to okay, you gotta go against them then. Well, you attracted those fans because you weren't being yourself. See, if you do a bunch of shit where you're not yourself. And you go on other shows and you try to pander to their audiences and you try to be this, that, and the other. Then, yeah, you're going to be stuck with a lot of people who expect you to be that version. But if you're always yourself, the only people who are going to watch you are people who like yourself. And then you're free, like me, to be you. Uh, But everyone is so worried, you know. They're so worried they're going to come off as mean or they're going to come off as disrespectful. Let it go. Let there's it's like yourself recorded. flow. Oh, you know how there's like the drama, like channels that make fun of comedians, the six mm-hmm. Joe Rogan comedians that like only got famous because Joe Rogan, and they're all getting like roasted on on the internet now, and their podcasts were doing really good, and they were doing tours, but really they're just Joe Rogan's friends. <laughs> <laughs> nice. What? You stood me up because of your ego. Absolutely not. Look at you- this. Let's see. That's right. That's right. Reaction. Well, now I'm going to hum. Look what Jeff says to him. <laughs> now I'm going to humble you. You stood me up on my barbershop because of your ego. Absolutely not. Because you need humbling. Look what Andrew says. You're hurt. Oh God. This is what Andrew says. You're hurt. Yeah, no shit, you retard. <laughs> but I didn't think I was above your barbershop show. I got real injuries. I actually liked that you were being creative. Dobrik is an asshole for what he did to... Tell David Dobrik. Andrew Schultz is going around calling David Dobrik an asshole, but he's... (laughs) When he sees him in person. (laughs) Can't slap his hand harder. Going to Dobrik's pizza... This Andrew Schultz is a real snake. Um, and then Jeff says, then why you side him with David Dobrik, the guy who killed Jeff Wittick? You mean humbling your hurt? No, okay. I'm not, I won't be. Oh. Okay, I, I've gotten to the gist here. I believe I've gotten to look, the gist look, here. Then, you... then, he starts, then he starts backtracking. 
I actually like that you were being. He said the barber shop is a good show. I actually like that you were being creative. Dolberg is an asshole for what he did to you. And I said, then why are you siding with him? He goes, fuck him. He's a piece of shit. I said, you're a piece of shit. So wait, wait, wait. Look at this. Unless you want to give me an address to meet up at. That's what Jeff says. And then Schultz says, I feel like you want. Look at this manipulation. Uh, this greasy Andrew Schultz. I feel like you want to be creative. Ultimately, that will give you the most joy in life. Excuse me? Says who? Father Andrew? I'm sure it feels like the people doing the low-hanging shit. Red bar. Too lazy. Too Look at this. See, it's really about this. I'm sure it feels... This is Andrew Schultz. I'm sure it feels like the people doing the low-hanging shit get all the success. But they aren't happy or respected. <gasps> me? I gotta have a drink. <laughs> Look at what he's saying. The private messages of Andrew Schultz. Show this to everybody. Now, where does he get this from? Because this is kind of psycho. I'm sure it feels like the people doing the low-hanging fruit get all the success. Um, excuse me? No, we don't. <laughs> um, excuse me? Do I look... Successful! Ah, my eye too. So I can't believe he would say that. Like, why is this on your mind? You literally get all the success. You're like the most famous comedian of our time for doing nothing. You're selling out. I mean, you're literally like the smallest show you do. You could right now go on Instagram and go, I'm doing a surprise show at McDonald's. For 50 bucks a piece, and you would make a million dollars. So, you're sitting around complaining about these hate channels? You're complaining about people like Redberg at 19K views? You're complaining about two, okay, I, at the most, 400K? You're complaining, that's all the success to you? But look at this, but they aren't happy or respected. That's what Andrew Schultz is saying about me. Too lazy to try. Matan Johnson, or whatever his name is. <laughs> He's saying this about Sam Hyde. He's saying this about comedy enforcement. Can you guys believe what you're seeing here? Thank you, Jeff. Thank you, Kim. Thank you. Kanye. Kanye. Look at this. Let's fuck him. He's a piece of shit. I said, you're a piece of shit. Good to have him. So... With the same fake laugh and same yes men, and you're go and you're all gonna get it one way or Whoa. another. Oh and my God. God. Year. <laughs> Thank I really you, Jeff. Think that there is room for growth here. I oh, really think up. you guys. I'm not. We're I don't know. I, I could just. I, I could see a world where. Wait, hold on. I forget this. He said, "I feel like you want to be creative. Ultimately, that will give you the most joy in life." I'm sure it feels like the people doing the low hanging fruit shit. Uh, get all the success, but they aren't happy or respected. Wait, I yeah, see this happy. All the success, oh, like stop. the people doing. Okay, look at this. There's more here. Um, they're not respected, but work your art, and you will feel joy and respect. So basically, you're trying to manipulate him into not doing hate content against comedians. Wow. And maybe he should put out an apology and denounce comedy and force. Yeah, is that what you want, Andrew? And how is that cutting into... See, Andrew and all these guys, they want a life where nobody is calling them out for their bullshit. They want to be able to get away with everything. And really, the only people in their way are a few of us. There's really not that many people in their way. So if they could wipe us off, like they want to delete me from the Kill Tony Reddit. Andrew Schultz wants to delete these channels and get everybody participating out of there by tainting our good name. No one respects them. It's low-hanging fruit. But our content is you. So you're low-hanging fruit? I, I don't understand. As this is bad. As if you talk about drama, I never, like... I mean, yeah, and seriously, it's like, but if it's not about a comedian, fruit? so you could talk about politicians, basketball players, movies, uh, musical artists, anybody else except for comedians. This has been my point since day one. Everybody, every comedian out there criticizes something. But if you criticize a comedian... Wow, that's Lord, that shouldn't be happening. That's not allowed. This has been my point from day one. 
I mean, when I started doing this and started going after comedians, people couldn't believe it. It took like people years till we got other channels doing it. Remember that? Remember when I put up a YouTube clip and people were like, a podcast talking about another podcast? It doesn't... What doesn't make sense? What about this doesn't add up to you guys? But here it is, clear as day. The comedians want to be invincible. They don't want anything in their way. And by the way, even if there's a thousand of us, how are we getting in their way? You guys keep getting richer and richer and richer and richer. No matter how loud I scream, no matter how many times I hit this or that, you will continue to be rich, 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 rich. Luckily, there's enough Mexicans and idiotic people out there that they don't give a fuck. You could lie straight to their face. You do it every day and they just keep giving you money. So the fact that you're sitting around worrying about this and trying to, uh, you know, get people to, to not like us. Jesus, we can't eat either. Only you. So if I'm sitting here, I could talk about I could talk about Kamala. Well, that would be okay. I just talk about it? Kamala all day or waltz. Would that be? <laughs> that's okay. Who can I talk about, Andrew? Who am I allowed to talk about that you'd respect? Unbelievable. Aren't you guys offended? Aren't you guys like, I, you can't believe it? Clip this. Show everyone. Tell everyone. <laughs> what Jeff said back. Jeff says back. Listen, I'm real with my audience. That's why they back me up. Let me know if you want to meet up and fight. <laughs> Let like me know if you want to meet up and fight. This is what it feels like to have an Uncle Laser on your side. Yeah, for real. Let's see what else uh, he says, because it's covered he wants, up He here, wants him to apologize? If you, This is what Andrew Schultz says next. If you apologize to my team for the threats and apologize for what you said. Now, the rest is blocked by player. Let's see. Maybe we'll, they'll uncover that. Let's find out. The low hanging fruit shit uh, get all the success, but they aren't happy or respected. Yeah, I'm not happy work or respected. Your, shit. Work your art and feel. Uh, I fuck you. I just started Thank saying you. suck my dick. And then I. Just, oh, here we oh. go. Look at this. Andrew Schultz. Thank you, Jeff, by the way. Guys, isn't Jeff a nice guy? I love him. Give him a year, guys. He's a nice guy. If you apologize, this is what Andrew said. If Mike you apologize, has been manipulating Jeff in the same way to try to unfriend Big Mike. Yeah. And I'm also willing. If Big Mike, <laughs> here's my uh, thing to Big Mike. Now, Jeff, if you want to show Big Mike this, Big Mike, if you turn on Logan, break your NDA. That's what you got to say first, because everyone's so afraid of this Logan and his and his suing. Break your NDA. Expose Logan. Don't worry about what Logan says back. No one's going to believe it. Don't worry. You'll be fine because that's where Mike lives. Mike, li Big Mike, could release himself from a lot of this guilt and pain and depression that he goes through every day. Every day he's on Twitter talking about how depressed he can barely get out of bed. He's aching. He's in pain because he's with Logan. He allows Logan to, to move how he moves. He knows if he ever stopped being friends with Logan, Logan would probably expose him or sue him. Mike, break the NDA, expose Logan. You will be set free. You'll wake up a new man. You'll be like me without sugar on pancakes disease. So that is my offer to Big Mike. I will gladly shake Big Mike's hand if he does the right thing and exposes Logan. And I bet Big Mike would feel a lot better about himself. He knows. He knows. That's the guilt in his eyes. You'll hold that guilt forever. You know Logan scamming, scheming. Lunchly covered in mold. I'll show you this next. <laughs> Lunchly, apparently, allegedly, because he's suing all my friends. Apparently, Lunchly is covered in mold. Now, Logan, please don't sue me. Do what's right. I'm a big fan of Brother Jay. Big fan of Greg Paul. Big fan of how they treat that mother of yours. <laughs> So, oh, this is what I want to read. If you apologize to my team for the threats and apologize for what you said on Chris's podcast, I think we can be cool. Look what Andrew Schultz is saying. <laughs> Otherwise, what, Andrew? Then you're not cool. Who gives a fuck? He, Jeff hates you. He said he wants to fight. <laughs> He's not asking to be cool. And now you're saying, apologize to me. Apologize to my team. 
and take back what you said on Chris's podcast, and then we could be cool. Or else what, Andrew? And then Jeff says, suck my dick. Thank you. <laughs> All right, let's see if there's any more. Isn't this wonderful? And then look at this. Andrew shows, ha ha, think on it. Who does he think he is? And have you seen his buddy Charlemagne? I'd love to expose him. Andrew, you were probably at P. Diddy's parties. I hope they've got some footage of you. I know you've done something deceitful to Jeff that wife of there, yours. And he said I know he saw you, you there. I believe in my own head that Andrew Schultz has done something deceitful to that wife of his. I believe Andrew's got a lot of skeletons and not just the one living in that giant body of his. He's been to P. Diddy's parties. You see Beyonce and Jay-Z trying to post all the time. You see this? You know what's so funny? I don't hear anyone talking about this. What happened to the Bayhive? Here, cut to me real quick. I, this is tangent. I go on Beyonce's page and comment after comment Right after the big P. Diddy, you guys see the big P. Diddy uh, conference with the DA or whoever that was? They said, we got all the names. We got lists of people. Many celebrities are involved in this P. Diddy thing, and we're going to get them all. And they're serious. Everybody's talking about Beyonce and Jay-Z being involved, which who's been telling you about this Beyonce for 20 years? Who's been telling you about them eyes about Beyonce? So... You go to Beyonce's Instagram, and for weeks, it's all hate. It's all, we know what you did. It's all, and you know, Beyonce's posting fake pictures, pretending to be smiling every day, posting more than she usually posts, which is a tell. You know, and by the way, are they even in America right now, Beyonce and Jay-Z? You gave them so much time to pack their bags. If Beyonce and Jay-Z aren't involved in the P. Diddy thing, who is? So, it's so funny. Remember, everybody used to say, oh, dude, say whatever you want about anybody, but not Beyonce, because the Bayhive, her fans, will destroy you. Guess who's nowhere to be found? The Bayhive. You could go on Beyonce's page and say whatever you want about her. Nobody's defending her. Where's the 800 million fat black chicks that used to destroy people's lives? for saying, I don't like Beyonce's new song. You used to get to, remember that? It was like a known thing. Oh, that Bayhive. Oh, don't double charge her. <laughs> and they're gone. So did the black girls all die from the diet, the unhealthy food, the, the food desert that they live in? Where did the Bayhive go? It's so interesting. I think they all just grew out of it. But Beyonce's that low that she has no fans, no support anymore? It's just hate, 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 hate. Is she sitting there shaking? Are her and Jay-Z, have they transferred all the money? Are, are we going to never see them again? Also this is exciting. This P. Diddy thing is exciting. But that press conference where he said, oh, the names will all be coming soon. was like a month ago and I ain't heard no name. So I know. Where are the, the names? names? It's like, guys, you're giving every one of P. Diddy's friends like more than enough time to like relocate and have a new, unless they privately were pulled aside and said, don't leave town. Because aren't all of, you know, the people who worked with P. Diddy, aren't they all gone by now? Like if you were doing bad stuff with P. Diddy, you've had like three months to figure out a plan. I don't Unless, know, but we should ask Patrick Melton because he knows the law. Whoa! Don't double charge him for it. I'm not kidding. He okay, knows let's see the rest of the this. law. Over and okay. over again, suck my dick, and then I, and then go on, and then I just started abbreviating. Uh, oh, look at this. Here's more Andrew Schultz. Think on it. But in order for us to be cool, I have to feel like you're not trying to use every moment oh, for clout. My God. This is the millionaire. Imagine if you shot text like this from me. Imagine. Uh, imagine with an A. I don't even A remember age. that part. That's insane. Look at, and then Jeff has to say, I don't want to be cool after what you said. I'd rather torture you for life. <laughs> I mean, this is an Andrew you Schultz can't be mad at scoop. That. This is an Andrew Schultz scoop. Tell everybody. I'd rather torture you for life. Jeff. <laughs> I'd what, what, when did I say that? I'd rather torture you for life. Oh, I'm reading it. I, re I really I, I really do mean, like, I, I see why you were angry. And I, I want to see what else you said here. 
That's not being real. That's being addicted to the attention. Look how manipulative he is. Thinking that Jeff's like a young creator who doesn't have a mind of his own. That Andrew, like Jeff's been doing this for a long time now. He's very rich. He's very respected. He's got like a billion chicks that love him. Of all races. Of all sizes. Ugly girls. Good girls. Big Mike's girl. And then Jeff, look at this. I'm done here. I'm done here. For life. Oh, I'm raining. East Coast. I, re- I really, I might I, I really do mean, like, I, I see why you were angry, and I think anger makes us react in certain ways. But at the same time, I see that he was maybe understanding he shouldn't have said that and, you know, kind of sided with you, apologized a little. I could see a world where maybe if it fits... You work By the out. way, Jeff has the desk from the first <laughs> Joker movie. The Joker's just kind of a fucking moron. Like, he's actually just kind of an idiot. I wonder if he's going to sell the desk. Remember, everyone loved Joker 1. For some reason, they hated Joker de la Perdue or whatever. I, don't, I really don't know the name. <laughs> uh, we went out to the theater to see Joker. Our thoughts on Joker coming up. The Joker's just kind of a fucking moron. Like, he's actually just kind of an idiot. Is that it for this? Uh, just quickly click ahead to see if there's any more text. Out on the remix. Really listen to and, you know and then, because <laughs> Tana's just is getting ready. Yeah. Yeah. He was like, my uh, shirt, because I'm... For some... For his... B- to been saying, Sorry about this noise. Asshole in the country. It's over. Well, that's probably it. Then, flagrant. Yeah. And, I think that's good enough. There, Andrew Schultz, you got a lot of explaining to do. Thank you to Jeff. We support Jeff FM. We lend our audience Mike to him. Mike has been wearing his Jeff FM hat almost every single day for I two I got this weeks. great hat. I wish I had it here to show you. I got this Jeff FM hat. It's wonderful. It's one of my favorite hats. I told you that before. We're going live. It's it's it's, we gotta go live. I appreciate that. Thank you. Right. Stop it. Come on. Like I see. Don't make me over spill. I'll spill this all out. 